Alright guys, my name is Darren and welcome back to my channel Daring Motors. Today we're talking about five things uh, and five reasons why your car or your truck right here could be overheating. Uh, so the first one that I want to get into, um, before I get into any of it, just remember if you like the videos or anything, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel uh, down at the bottom right corner. You can just click that right there. So let's get started. First thing that I always check uh, when I'm making sure the cooling system is running well, and this is something that you might not really think of, and that's to make sure that you have airflow going through the front of your car. And the reason I say that is because if this is blocked off or restricted in any way, uh, you could be having a problem with cooling because if you're not getting air through, uh, you're not going to be having a cooling effect. And I'm going to uh, show kind of an example of that, of what that can actually do to your car. Alright, so I got a little setup here. I have just a fan that I use in my house when it gets a little hot. And this is going to act like our electric fan in a car. I'll show you and talk about that little little veiler a little bit later. But the other thing is right here. This is an AC condenser, but it's very similar to a radiator. But we're going to use this as an example. And basically what happens is when your car turns on, you have your fan pulling air from here and pulling it and pushing it out. So, basically if this gets restricted here, and you can't get any air through, then you're going to have a problem. And I'm going to show you you're driving down the road, and you happen to drive past a grocery bag, and it hits your car. And now it's blocking all this airflow. Now you can't get any air through here. Your fan has to work harder, and it's going to cause problems. And some newer cars, they have those fins in front of your grill that can open and close to cause airflow. So that's something you should check very first if you see that your car's having an overheating problem. Now the next thing you want to... Uh, check is you want to check your coolant levels. I'm going to pop the hood of this car and we'll get to that and check it out. So let's pop open this hood. Uh, the second thing you want to check is just to make sure that your car has uh, enough coolant in it. So the first thing you want to look for is something that's like this, your radiator cap or an, o an overflow tank. So mine right next to each other. First I'm going to check this coolant level right here. As you can see, it is full. There's coolant all the way up to there. So let's close that up. And then next you want to check the coolant level. I have a little kind of dip tube that comes in here. And as you can see, uh, it's at like the mid mark, so I'm doing good on that as well. But if your car doesn't have enough coolant, uh, I would definitely fill it up. And if you are seeing that you're filling it up and it's continually to run out, that's when you need to check for leaks. That's going to get to our next step where you need to make sure that your car is not leaking coolant or it's not going anywhere else. So if you come underneath your car at the end of the day and you see all this dripping like this, then you might have a problem. And your car could be leaking coolant and could be a leaky radiator or anything, so you need to get that checked out, um, either yourself or with somebody else. All right, now the third thing that could be causing you uh, to have your car overheating is one, if your water pump is failing you. So your water pump, my water pump is right back behind this fan itself right in there but if there's nothing leaking out of the water pump most likely the water pumps not a problem uh, so that's the one thing you want to check and just make sure that your car is not leaking coolant from anywhere else because you could have a head gasket failure which could be really bad uh, you could be leaking from your intake manifold if it's connected to your cooling system um, there's a lot of other things you can check so that's just the third thing to so make sure that no coolant is leaking anywhere. So now the next thing you want to check this is the fourth thing and what you're going to do is you want to look in here you want to check right here you have a radiator fan and this right here so I have two I have one right here that's mechanical and I have another one right back here that you can kind of see that's electrical and first you want to check this mechanical fan should spin not too freely because there is something called a fan clutch which is this part right here and that is also something you need to check if your fans aren't spinning or if you're driving and your fan is super loud uh, it could be a bad fan clutch but now I'm going to show you how to check your electrical fan to see if it's cutting on or not. Because this is actually an issue I had in this very car, is my electric fan was not cutting on. So, what you want to do is you're going to find your fuse box. Mine's right here, so I'm going to open this up. And what I'm going to do is, in here, actually, thankfully, it tells me where everything is. So I am going to be looking for an uh, AC fan relay. So a blower motor relay. Not a blower motor. Radiator fan relay. That's what I'm looking for. And so as you can see right up here, it says radiator fan relay number two. So I'm going to come to my car. 
All right, so mine is actually a mare, so wherever it was. So this right here says fan relay, so that would be this one right here because that's where it would sit uh, if this was closed down like that, like this on it. So I'm going to pull this relay, and what I'm going to do is it's called jumping a relay. So as you can see, there's a little diagram on here. Let's see if I can get that to focus. All right, so there's a little diagram on here. All right, so there's a little diagram on this relay. And it's going to show you a bunch of different numbers. So you have 86, 85, 86, 87, 87, 8, and 30. Why there's a random 30 there? Don't ask me. But um, what you're going to basically want to do is you're going to want to go from 30 to 37. So then you go on this part, and we know that 30 is number 3, and 87 is number 5. So we're going to go back here, and we're going to find number 3, which is this top one number five which is the second one and we're gonna jump those so now let's get over back to the fuse box and get try that so now we're gonna come back to where our relay plugs in and so we remember those two spots we need to connect from here to here these two ones that are straight not these three so if we look at it we have this slot right here and this slot right here that we need to jump so I'm just taking any old piece of wire that has two sides and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick one into one side and I'm going to stick the other into the other side and when I do that I should hear the fan click on so the fan is cutting on and let me get you a view of that while I'm doing this So the fan's turning on, and so that means we don't have a problem with our fan. So that way, uh, when the car gets too hot, the fan will be kicking on. Another thing you can check if you still feel like it's not kicking on is you can get your car up to operating temperatures. Uh, turn, get out of the car, pop the hood, and see if the fan is still turning on or not. So that's another thing that you can do. Okay, so now the fifth, the fifth thing that I'm going to talk about, uh, it's important, and it's actually something that is also a problem in this truck as well, uh, that my car is overheating. I checked the fan, the fan wasn't working so I fixed that. The mechanical fan, the AC, the fan clutch was not working so I fixed that. And then my car was still having some overheating issues. And so this is the last thing that I checked and that was the thermostat. And what the thermostat does is when it gets your car gets to a certain temperature it'll either open or it'll close itself. So when it's winter time and you want your car to be heating up and you want there to be heat in your car, you want that thermostat to stay closed so it can heat up as quickly as possible. But in the summer, or when you're driving, you want it to open up so that way your car can start to cool itself down so it doesn't overheat. So if your thermostat is stuck closed, your car could be overheating. Also, if your thermostat is stuck open, your car could be running cool. So that's another thing you can check if your thermostat never gets, your car temperature never gets high enough. So on uh, most trucks, it's located on the radiator hoses. So if you come to mine, uh, if you come underneath the car, you can see the lower radiator hose right here. And then the thermostat is actually in this housing right here. Uh, when I replaced it, the bolt snapped, and I didn't want to get crazy with it, so I'm just using this clamp right now. Uh, it's been working for the last year, so if that happens to you, there's a little trick on if a bolt breaks and you don't want to drill it out of your block. So, um, and that's where the thermostat is. You pull it out, and Honestly, just replace it and refill up your coolant and it should fix your issue if you checked everything else. But if you try all five of these things and your car is still overheating, then um, there could be a bigger relying issue under there. You could have en engine sludge where it's not letting coolant get to places so it can't cool down or some other issues like that. So um, thank you guys so much for tuning in for the video. Um, if you have any questions or if you have anything that you've seen in your car that's had overheating and problems you found to fix it I did not mention in this video, let me know. Uh, and that way I can include it in a video if, if I ever make this one again. So, uh, you guys have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching and tuning in with Daring Motors.